hello good evening good evening everyone and welcome to the slay to success talk show you know who is here y'all right this is your slay queen rochelle hemingway and i am the ceo and founder of slay to success which is a leadership and transformational consultant service business i empower women who are working in executive leadership roles and women who are transitioning from a long career to step up into their most authentic personal brand to gain lucrative opportunities. As you know, I'm a professional speaker. I'm a leadership and image consultant. I am the author of the book, Slay to Success, and I am a United States Air Force veteran of 30 years. Huh? So please, if you are here tonight with us, put it in the comments. We want to know where you're streaming in from and what's been happening. I know we didn't speak here last week because of the Super Bowl, okay? But we are back here this Sunday. And so tell us where you're coming from. Tell us your name. I think we got a one comment up here already. Chevy, hello, Queen. Thank you for joining us live tonight. So the purpose of this talk show, everyone, is to highlight men and women who are living a life of service on their own terms and using the Slay Universal Philosophies to positively impact the world. The world. And as we know, Slay means to kill it, to dominate, and to nail it, to be on point, to impress greatly, and to dream big and work hard until you own it. It is also an acronym. It stands for stay ready to be ready, lead out loud, a sense of family, a sense of community, and knowing you are built to last. So we're going to take care of a little bit of housekeeping. As you know, if you want to keep up on all the Slate Success happenings, um, you can go ahead and scan the QR code, save it to your favorites, or you can go to www.slaytosuccess.com and I will add you to the email list so that way you know all the happenings that are going on because you know, Slate to Success, we don't mess around, all right? We are out here and we are moving and we are taking care of business. So don't forget to share, subscribe, and like tonight's show, y'all, okay? Because we know sharing is caring. So tonight, I want you to get prepared. Go ahead and get your drink of choice. Of course, you know I have my tea, all right? But whatever your beverage of choice is, because I have Linda Pincala in the building tonight, okay? Let me just share with you who Linda is. She is my great friend that I met from the Business Women's Network of Howard County. And she is just a just a breath of fresh air and has a lot of knowledge and experience. So her greatest joy is her six grandkids, of course. And it's also to help connect the dots to naturally embrace health and wellness on the road to longevity. She as a wellness catalyst through published articles presentations in person or online, aromatherapy massages, and her recent book, The Pause to Relax Ladies for Robust Heart Health, she finds her heart's passion to help people relax, okay? So this conversation is for a lot of us because I know here in the audience, we are high-performing professional women, and we need to remind ourselves that we need to relax. So Linda is here to do that. All to be more intentional with lifestyle choices, she discovered the fact that heart disease is the number one killer of men and women, but when research revealed that many women know nothing of this statistic, this was following Linda's AFib or atrial fibrillation and her own lessons learned. Her mess that is now her message is delivered in an engaging way by drawing from her years as a jockey and the analogies of both careers, highlighting her lessons learned from horses and clients, then sharing holistic self-regulation modalities that help lessen stress, enhance breath work, and find a peaceful balance. So let me bring her to the stage here. Hi, Linda. Hi, Rochelle. It's great to be with you, sweetie. 
I know. I just look, I've been looking forward to this conversation all week because <laughs> after our conversation I had when we were at your house, I was like, she has to be on the show. Like she has to be on the show. It's just so much information that you are sharing that I'm like, my audience would absolutely benefit from this. So we definitely have you know, a few queens in the house. So Tiffany is here. Thank you so much, Tiffany, for being here live with us tonight. So Linda, we're just going to get right into it because I know we have a lot of information to share. So just tell the audience a little bit about who you are and your journey up to this point. Sure. Um, some of my words, if you're a New Yorker, you will probably hear, oh, she's from New York. Well, that's because I was. <laughs> so I was born and raised in New York in Queens Village, Queens. And I was the second of five kids of my mom and dad in Queens. And um, when I went to college for one year, uh, in between uh, the semesters, I wanted to go and be a hot walker at Belmont. And so that was the beginning of... Uh, I always had a love affair with horses. I rode when I was a kid out on Mastic Beach in Long Island, but I knew I loved horses all my life. But when I went there and I was rejected for a whole week trying to be a hot walker, which is the lowest kind of job on the racetrack, walking horses, cooling mm. them down. Um, the, the very last day I was standing at the racetrack and my mentor at the time, Mr. Root, he came up to me and he looked down at me. He was on a pony and I was a little down here on the ground. And he said, wow, you look small enough to be a jockey. What are, you, what are you doing? I said, oh, I just want to be a hot walker. So he said, well, come to barn 16 and I'll put you to work. And he did. And he was a jockey. And so he loved to mentor and train mostly girls, mostly women riders, because he knew that women had a different touch with a horse we didn't necessarily manhandle them or anything. And so he loved working with women. And so he was my mentor uh, for years. And um, that was in 74. And then I was with him for three years. He sent me to the farm to break yearlings. That's where you learn of how to really ride is break yearlings. Then you learn how to gallop and how to breeze and ride fast, you know, breeze horses and all. And so um, I went to Saratoga with him one year and I was ready to ride and I was ended up um, spraining my ankle. So mm -hmm. that ended my career. I, I was working for Lucian Lauren at that time, who was the trainer of secretariat. And so I knew I was ready to ride races. So I came down here to Maryland in 1977, Rochelle, mm -hmm. and I knew I had to begin riding. So I began here. And then over the years, I was the leading female rider here in Laurel, Pimlico, Bowie, Pre, um, and all the tracks here in Maryland. And also I rode to Charlestown, Penn National, places like that. And so um, I set some records and I broke a lot of bones and dislocated a lot of shoulders, but thank God I don't have any arthritis from any of them. Wow. And I learned a lot of lessons about being an entrepreneur and also about, you know, being my own spokesperson out there in, in the world um, in, in a male dominated field. We all know how that is. Mm -hmm. working in a male dominated field and you know what your you know um what your thoughts your actions and you know how you present yourself uh to be yeah. professional in your career and so my highlight was 1982 i got to represent the united states with five other female riders in the japan cup the ladies cup so we went to japan for three weeks and then i came home and um i had my son lance the next year and so in 1983 i became a mom and I was still on the racetrack, but I realized that I really needed to do something else because it's a fairly dangerous way to make a living when you're a mama, right? Yeah. So um, I stayed there a little bit after after having Lance. And then by the time I was pregnant with Amanda, I was in massage therapy school because I wanted to use my brain and I wanted to not just do physical work and I wanted to do something with my hands, you know? Yeah. So I said, you know, when you were sharing your experience with the horses, I was truly inspired because at first of all, I never met a jockey in person. And then secondly, a female jockey. <laughs> and then thirdly, one that was out win winning records. And, you know, I 
always watch, you know, on the show, the events and so forth with their, their races and even, you know, when they're jumping over the hurdles and, and all the things. And it is by far very fascinating to me how you train a horse to do all that and then put a person on top <laughs> of the horse, you know? So um, that, that to me, for me, because I never have had anyone in my circle of friends or anyone that I knew. So that to me is, is certainly something that is so different, but yet so inspirational. And then when you're talking about going from the hot walker to actually on the horse, you know, that's what I think a lot of times where we start at as, you know, we we start from a very beginning stages of something and then we mature. And as we mature to whatever that is, then we find ourselves doing something that's like almost undreamable, really. <laughs> like, oh, my goodness, I'm there. Right. And mm -hmm. then having children and then going into the massage therapy um, as an entrepreneur. So. So tell us a little bit about this entrepreneur journey um, and getting started in the massage uh, therapy and kind of some of the lessons that you may have learned through um, entrepreneurship. Um, well, out of all five of us kids in my family, um, three of us were entrepreneurs. And my brother was a painter, my other brother Bruce is currently, he owns his own business of, um, you know, building and kitchens and all of that. And then, um, and then me. So three out of five of us were entrepreneurs. And so some families have some and some don't, but you just have to have that mental capacity to think ahead, to really know what you want, but also to not really want to work for anyone else. You just really want to chart your own course, if you will. Yeah and really know what that North star is for you and really where you want to go with it. So I think the racetrack really honed me with me, not even thinking about it at the time, but really taught me a lot of life lessons about, um, again, how to present myself professionally, not to sell my soul for anything, just for yeah. someone else's needs or desires. You know what I mean? Yeah. And to really be ultra professional, in, in what I'm doing. And the same is true in massage therapy, because you really have to know how you're going to live your life in this field and how you're going to touch people in a very caring, loving, meaningful way and a safe space for people to really be able to feel their bodies in relaxed mode, Rochelle, because so many people are under so much stress. And so what I learned about being an entrepreneur through all those the last 37 years is that um, I have a lot to share in terms of offering people lessons about what not to do, what to do, and really focus on connections, just like we do at BWN, Business Women's Networking, is really having that connecting heart to heart, yeah. mouth to mouth experience, just walk with some of the people from BWN. I like to just go for a walk with them. Mm -hmm. We don't have to just sit and eat or drink or have a cup of tea. We could just walk and talk. We can connect and really allow us to really have a relationship first yeah. and then see why I would like to do business with this other person. And yeah. so um, that's such an important component of being an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, but also the back end part of is running the whole business of understanding, you know, you know, spreadsheets and, you know, your income and taxes and all that stuff too. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a lot. It is but, a lot. <laughs> and, you, and you took a very fast paced course on that in the last few years. Yeah, I did. And so it is a lot, but like you said, charting your own journey and not working for anyone else is where I'm at at this stage in my life. Um, and, you know, I'm willing to take it on and, you know, you face it as an entrepreneur, you, you try things out, you see what's working, you pivot, you do a lot of different things in it, but you understand when you say that professionalism is like the first thing that needs to occur because no one wants to do business with someone who's unprofessional or who isn't taking their business seriously. So I'm absolutely with you. And so you said there are things that you should not do. Like, what are those things that you should not do 
as an entrepreneur? Well, don't expect someone else to to want it more than you. Don't mm-hmm. expect, say, your, your spouse or even a, you know a fellow co person in in your field or whatever. Don't expect them to really tell you what to do. There are so many people that begin a journey of entrepreneurs, and, and so they don't really realize that you go to Score Ace like I did. I went to Score Ace. Yep. I became a member of a chamber, a member of Central Maryland Chamber, or you could be a member of Howard County cham- Chamber here in Howard County or whatever chamber, wherever you are, Montgomery County Chamber. Yep. But become part of something and don't do it alone. Don't think that you could do this business alone. And don't think you're just going to sit in your little corner and map out a plan and figure it out. You have to get out of your office and go out into the world and don't think that you don't need to because you have to get out there. You have to see how other people are running their businesses. Say your competition, you want to go see, well, how how does another massage therapy company run their business? Yeah. And so you you have to be the CEO of you and your company, just like I teach people in the in their health realm of their body. And so you're the CEO of your body too. You have to make good lifestyle choices, wellness choices, proactive wellness choices, because you don't want to be the last person to know, ah, damn, I should have done this. I should have done that. You don't want to end up in the hospital like I did with AFib and wonder what in the world is going on. You know, I love what I do is because I want to prevent women from having that experience that I had scared the crap out of me. I never had my heart beating out of my chest before. I didn't know that I was going to probably die if they did cardioversion. And then I prayed a lot when they admitted me and all I did was pray. I say, God, get me out of here. And I I need to go home now. Mm -hmm. So fix this and fix it now. Yeah. And so that's how that went. And and it was scary. And so what I don't want is I, I, I don't want women to have to go through that and wonder. So, so much of this is preventable. 80% of cardiovascular disease is preventable. And so if we know that, all we need is a few nuggets of truth and knowledge to empower each of us to begin to pay attention day to day. And we don't just pay attention the month of February or February 14th or Whatever. I I always say every day should and every month should be National Heart Awareness Month every day because we're dying of cardiovascular disease. Ladies, we are dying in rapid numbers, rapid numbers. And it's sad and and it's not necessary. It's not. It it really isn't. And, you know, when we started talking about this and we met and you were talking about AFib um, and you know, a lot of things came up for me because my background is medical from when I was in the military. Mm -hmm. So I understand the heart rhythms and, you know, kind of how the normal sinus rhythm, you know, Mm -hmm. on a strip, if you're having an electrocardiogram, anyone who's, Mm -hmm. you know, we're talking kind of like a medical Mm -hmm. um, um, terminology, but if you have, you know, the, the, the leads, the pads hooked up to you and they're monitoring your heart, so tell us what type of symptoms you were experiencing when you were admitted to the hospital for AFib or afibrillation is what it's called. Right, right. So say if your heart beats like this mm-hmm. on a regular, and everybody could hear that, right? So AFib is it beats like this. Really irregular. Mm-hmm. And I had a stethoscope in my closet. And so I listened to my heart at the time and it was like really crazy and erratic. Now, at this point, I never knew the word AFib. So I called a, a friend of mine across the street in, in Laurel where I lived and And I said, what is this? She goes, oh, Linda, you're an AFib. You need to go to the hospital. And it was like 11 o'clock at night. I was like, go to the hospital now? <laughs> this is a classic <laughs> women, you yeah. know, like, you know, right. denial or whatever. I was like, now she goes, Linda, you need to go to the hospital now. Your heart is erratically beating. Yes. 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 And so you went to the hospital. They said, hey, you have atrial fibrillation. And so what has happened since then for you? 
So here's the story about that, because it's a beautiful story, because I learned a lot, but this is the genesis of my book. So that night they admitted me and my husband was there and they said, we're going to give me IV mm-hmm. to, to get it to an and oral first. And hopefully that gets it back to normal sinus rhythm. And then they gave me IV. And then by probably about two in the morning, they said, no, it's not getting back. So let's admit you and Joe went home. And then um, we should hopefully get back into normal sinus rhythm at the time. And so I go into a room with another woman who I think she just had surgery. She was in pain and she was like crying out. It was, wasn't a very relaxing place, but I was watching my heart. You watch it on the e, your EKG going crazy. Right. Mm-hmm. And I had to stop doing that. And I just prayed. I just prayed to God. And I was like, so the next morning and eventually at four in the morning, it came back. And all I could say to the nurse when she came in and I saw it had a beautiful rhythm to it. Right. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm back. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And all I kept saying was thank you, God. But I kept saying it to the nurse and I know she thought I was crazy, but I just thank God seriously that I'm okay. Now the next morning, this cardiologist who I don't know from Adam, um, he comes in and he goes, Linda, all your blood work is just good. It's fine. And I have thyroid issues. I'm hypothyroid, so I'm on a medication. But your thyroid can also cause this because it's in charge of the heartbeat. So I thought maybe it's my thyroid med, but it wasn't. He goes, all your numbers are just fine. So I said, well, then what happened? Mm. And Rochelle, I looked him dead in the eye. I said, what happened? I'll never forget. He, he leans back. He goes, you know what, Linda? Sometimes we just don't know. I was like, really? And that's that, really? I was like, it, it, give me something. Is this something right. I cannot not do next or something I should do more of? Right. You know, I'm a, I'm a um, solution person. Just yes. tell it to me. He could tell me nothing. He, he says, sometimes we just don't know. And mm. so that was the genesis of my book because it wasn't good enough for me not knowing. And I wanted to know what I did wrong, what I could do better. And I needed to go on. I was like a hound dog for research. I love research, which is why I loved writing my book, is because everything I found, Rochelle, was mind bending and eye opening for me because I never knew heart disease was our number one killer, number one in the world. But for men and women back then, we were surpassing men. This is pre COVID. We were surpassing men of dying of cardiovascular disease, which That really hurt my heart. It blew my mind. Then when I learned that most women don't know this, most people don't. And then I, so then with all this research, I began my Wise Heart Health for Life program for women. And I started teaching it. This is all pre-COVID, right? Yeah. And I would teach it to any group of women that wanted to hear me. And so um, whether it could be a church, whether it's a business, whether it's a lunch and learn on Zoom. Yeah. And when I say how many women know that cardiovascular diseases are number one killer? You know, I was lucky if half the room raised their hands. There are so many women who still don't know. So I said, you know, Linda, you got to do something about this. I have to be part of the solution. Yeah. And in my lifetime, I just have to help people just like Barbara Streisand. She looked at all this too. Now she has a lot more resources and bazillions of dollars than me. All I could do is write my little book and teach and talk like this. But she started an entire whole facility for women because she saw medically that we were not part of studies like men were. And actually the medical field thought we were just little men and we just have the same symptoms as men for heart attacks. No, we don't, Mm -hmm. which is why I created my PEBS, P-E-B-S acronym to tell women that we are different. When we have a heart attack, we are different than men. And the P stands for pain. In your face, your jaw, your neck, your arm. And the E is for exhaustion. Because when some people are exhausted, you know, like when you were pregnant, you, you've had children, mm-hmm. that exhaust, exhaustive feeling 
where you've been, you've run 10 marathons. Yeah. Well, it's even worse than that. It's exhaustion for no reason at all. You did nothing different. That's part of a heart attack. And then the B is breathing and the, and your breath work could be short. Mm -hmm. Then you also have panting and also it's not normal breath work. And then the S is for your stomach is upset, but also you could be sweating. And so it's like a pebble in the shoe. Pebs is like pebble in the shoe. And what will we do? We would stop, yeah. right, Rochelle? We'd stop and take yeah. the pebble out because it doesn't feel good. But here's the deal with women. We could be in denial. You read, you read stories about women that didn't go to a hospital for one week, two weeks, but they were in the middle of heart attack. And by the grace of God, they, they lived and they made it. Now they know. But until you know, you don't know. But once you know, you can't unknow this. Yeah. Michelle. You, you cannot can't unknow it. No. And then Leslie, so Leslie went ahead and put out your acronym. Because yep. we love acronyms. She's acronym heavy. I love acronyms. Acronym. Me too. Yep, and this I is the, the way that you explain it, the pebble in the shoe. Right. It's something that people can actually remember. You'll remember. So pain, exhaustion, breathing, and stomach or sweating. Sweating. Or sweating. Is is the things that you know we need to be paying more attention to. And Tiffany, so Tiffany recently had a, an incident where it involved her heart. And she is still serving on active duty. And she went to the doctor and they did a whole bunch of tests and so forth and so on. And she gave, they gave her the same thing that they said to you. We don't know. We don't know, you know, why you're having this experience. Um, and so, you know, going through the research, I'm loving the fact that you went a step further, right, to find out what it is that was, you know, potentially could have caused you to be in that certain situation. And I know, like, as you have talked about, the pandemic has really put pressures and stresses on our bodies like no other. Like, people are not paying attention, all right? We are just, you know, okay, we had a pandemic, and then now we're moving along. But Tell me, uh, you know, your thoughts about that, you know, and how that may kind of, um, you know, uh, what do you call it? increase the chances of you having um, some heart issues? Uh, I definitely will. Can I digress back to Leslie, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Leslie, um, what's in my book, The Pause to Relax, is the research is showing that we women built differently than men can have microvascular disease, which is, it mimics a heart attack. But since we have such smaller vessels in our heart than men, it has the same as that symptoms, but it's not a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And it's from emotional stress. So I would offer to women that have been cleared, everything is good and no worries. It wasn't a heart attack. It could have, if you were under an incredible amount of emotional stress, not physical stress, but emotional to the heart, through sadness, through grief, through divorce, through loss, through um, depression, loneliness, whatever, um, that heaviness really can mimic a heart attack. Mm. And so that's such an important component to remember for us women. As I lead into what happened in the pandemic, now, all my facts and figures in the second chapter of my book, medically about the heart, can almost be th not thrown out the window, but things have changed so much yeah. since the pandemic. Yeah. And so a big component of what I learned and why I created my nine pillars of heart disease prevention, ladies, is because we need to be paying attention to stress. And so mm -hmm. one of them is stress. And I don't think enough people talk about it. Now, during the pandemic, that we talked about three M's, mindfulness, meditation, and massage, right? And I started teaching guided self-massage online to companies, mindful meditation and stretching and all that, because people really needed to have that because women became so stressed out during that. 
women who in their homes had children all of a sudden became a homeschooler. Mm-hmm. I said to myself, it's one thing for me to be told, stay in your home, don't go out and whatever, all the stuff we went through, right? But when a woman has to teach her one, two, three, four kids about school and supposedly maybe you know, work from home too, how did we do it? How did you guys do it? I didn't have to do that. How did they do it, Rochelle? I don't know. Through tears, a lot of pain, a lot of, there was a lot of, um, you know, outside of that normal routine that you had, it was a lot of disruption. And the, the, the way that they teach children now is different from the way that we were taught when we were younger. So, you know, we didn't have to really be paying attention to core math, which is one of the things that has changed (laughs) <laughs> as we found out and us not understanding how you know our son was being taught in the schools it created even a more the stress that was just unreal and the fact that you got to be online you got to have your laptop with the wi-fi going if you got three or four kids in the house and everybody's sucking the wi-fi out right. just forget about it right everybody's on a different schedule and then you, there's no outlet. There's no release. You know, where, how, the only way you were getting released is if you walked outside and, you know, maybe got in your car and drove around. But if you're in the household with all these stresses there, it was just, it, you know, it was one of those times where we think back, like you said, how did we get through that? Some families got through it and, and some, some families did. didn't, you know? Sadly. Yeah. But prior to that, women like Harriet Beecher Stowe always says, we are the backbone of society. We hold families together, right? We run the calendars for families. We, you know, organize what goes on in the home with, you know, if you're married and children and all that. But it was during COVID that I really think women just let their health fall apart. And Oh, yeah. Not, and many of us didn't go to the doctors even in the first year or two after that. But here, here's a fact about the pandemic. The pandemic erased five decades, listen to this, of progress and lower, lowering heart death rate. It lowered 10 years of progress with non-Hispanics and African-Americans. That's really sad. Really sad. And oh, I can't believe it. there are so many people that really need to have a really good toolbox of simple day-to-day things they can do, breathing techniques. I start with a breath and just teach people on the massage table or uh, teaching it like this online. And when I was in the American Insta- uh, Institute for Stresses podcast, I taught breathing there. Mm-hmm. And maybe we could teach breathing later too. Yeah. Teach about two two techniques. And you and it's you know box breathing. It was taught. You know, it is taught by the Navy SEALs. Now, the, those are some badass guys that yeah, are. really are under very intense, stressful, pressurized situations. And so to be taught to inhale four, pause, exhale four, pause. And that's what gets them through, Rochelle. And that's what I teach. If it's good enough for the Navy SEALs. Yeah. Good enough for us, right? Good enough for us. us women, we're 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 Navy SEALs in, in real life day to day, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um the the things that you're talking through, like like um we talked about earlier, these aren't things that we just sit around and we think about. And we are just going like a hundred miles per hour every single day. And I also realized, because we have women who have transitioned from a long career, that's part of the audience. When you stop from doing all the things from the schedule, that too puts stress on you and can cause like a lot of different, you know, um, bodily changes, if you will. Um, So, I mean, when you talk about the heart and how it can affect, it can affect so many different areas and aspects of our life, you know? And so you talked about box breathing as being one of a a tool, if you will, um, that you could use and you could do that anywhere at any time. Driving down the road, (laughs) 
sitting at your computer, cutting up veggies in the kitchen sink. You could do box breathing anytime. Yeah. Alternate nostril breathing, a little different because you need to do alternate nostril. But box breathing, you could do it anywhere. And you teach kids, you teach grandkids, you teach people how to do these little simple tools. Simple. But just to kind of like loop into how does stress and the heart get affected? And so I like to explain it like this. When people are under chronic stress, I'm talking chronic, our mm -hmm. bodies aren't meant to be under chronic stress. So the sympathetic nervous system of cortisol, nor epinephrine, adrenaline, all of that, the body courses out from your adrenals that sit on top of your kidneys. And that's a normal thing it does. Like if somebody rolled over your kid's leg in a car, you're going to find the power in you to lift up that car, oh, right? No, that's and right. Free up your kid. And how does that happen? The adrenaline that you have, you need to do that. That's the sympathetic nervous system doing its job. Mm -hmm. What happens is that we have that same fear factor going on, maybe at the office with a boss at work, hating your job. You have that same same feeling and chemical reaction. And so when you don't have the off valve of that chemical, you know, blowing out of, of all of that cortisol and adrenaline, then it causes the body to get changed. What happens is the parasympathetic nervous system isn't engaged because the cortisol kind of dominates it. It's almost like a, like a kid on the basketball court gets dominated. Mm -hmm. by a, the taller, bigger kid because it, yeah. it gets dominated. So the sympathetic nervous system overwhelms the parasympathetic. And then you, you could be depressed. You have gut problems. You, you have stomach issues. Your brain isn't functioning well because your vagus nerve isn't engaged. So I talk a lot about the vagus nerve. But what happens is your body gets rusted out from all of that cortisol mm -hmm. because it's so high. And what happens is it creates inflammation. So we've all heard, yeah. Inflammation is the bad guy. Yes, it is. But how does that happen? It happens because cortisol, too much of it, creates an inflammatory process in the body. And it be, it's just a chemical process. And I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. But I learned about all of this. And that was what I was not doing well, being in the wellness business and not paying attention to my health, is that I failed at that. I failed at finding that well of peace day to day, even though I was giving massages, telling people how to da da da. <laughs> I was failing and I ended up in the hospital, right, Rochelle? Yeah, yeah. And so what I do now, it ain't what I used to do. I get a massage every month. I go to my acupuncturist every month. I go to yin yoga weekly. I go to a chiropractor every month and I meditate every day. So I do all of that, which I didn't do before I got uh, my AFib. Mm. And then afterwards, after this whole COVID thing, I realized I have to change the way I'm teaching wellness too now because people need a different toolbox because the stress is even higher now post COVID than it was uh, before COVID. And so there's, there's a totally different way of just meeting people, engaging them, but offering simple tools, Rochelle. People are already overwhelmed with so much stuff. Yeah. I just keep it simple. Keep it simple. So kiss theory. Keep it simple, silly. I agree. Yeah. Because of yeah. the oversaturation of information yeah. and then you're so overwhelmed, you just don't want to even do any of it. You're just like, right. forget about you're it. Done. You're, you're done. You're done. <laughs> can't do it. <laughs> so, you know, for those that are listening in, thank you so much for being here live because we're here live. But this is a serious conversation that I wanted me and Linda to have because not only is it National, you know, American Heart Health Month, but this is something that we need to be paying attention to because as we are maturing, I'm not saying we're getting old, all right, but as we're maturing and, you know, our bodies are changing and the environment is changing. Sometimes we are going through some things and we don't know quite exactly what is happening to us. And the last thing that I would I need to hear is for someone to, you know, call me and tell me that they're in the hospital because they've had a heart attack or, you know, they had a stroke or, you know, something has happened to where they're now having to 
uh, stop and really address the health concern and it's an emergency. So we're talking about being proactive, right? Taking care of yourself now in the moment and giving your body what it needs right now. So um, Linda is here to help us to um, kind of walk through this. Um, so you were sharing, Linda, some statistics, some very glaring statistics before we hopped on. Um, can you share those statistics with the audience about? Sure. Yeah. So that way they know. Sure. So these are some hard facts 2024 post pandemic that I got from research, um, which you guys can all do too. More than 60 million, which is 44% of women have some form of heart disease already. So 44% of women have some form of heart disease already. One in three deaths every year. In 2021, one in five deaths, while only 56% of women knew heart disease is our number one killer. And this is what I was saying, Rochelle. It's, it's sad that people still don't know. So it's imperative that we know the signs and the symptoms. So, But in this 45 to 65 age range, mm-hmm. age range if yeah. we had a heart attack, we more than men will die within a year of it. So that captivated my attention like years ago. But now in our age range, and I'll be 69 in May, in our age range here, if you have a heart attack, oh my gosh, men do better than us. So I'm such a competitive person. I'm like, gosh, (laughs) you know, we have to do better than this lady. (laughs) We do. We have to bring these numbers down. Okay, say that. Say that last one one again. In the 45 to 65 range, if we had a heart attack, women, more than men, will we will die within a year of it. More than men will die within a year of it. We will die. Okay. And all of this, a lot of it's from stress. Women over 65, more likely than men the same age, will die a few weeks within a few weeks of a heart attack. That's from the Department of Health and Human Services, HHS. Okay. Um, cardiovascular disease kills more cancer, more people than all cancers combined. Now, this is the newest statistic I never heard of since recently. It is a number one killer of new moms and more than one third of maternal deaths of new moms. We're talking new moms. Put a pin, let's go, we gonna put a pin right here, Linda. This this right here is something that needs to be talked through. So we're going to spend a little bit of time on this. When I had AJ, I was considered high risk because I was 37 years old. I After I had him, because I was diagnosed with preeclampsia, and after the C-section, I was gorked out. And I say gorked out, meaning I was on magnesium drip for three days because my blood pressure was so high. It was 200 over 100 and something when they had me on the table as they're cutting, you know, to to pull him out. And for three days, they could not get that blood pressure down. For a whole year after I had him, my blood pressure was so high that I was taking double the amount of blood pressure medication just so that they can titrate this blood pressure down. And so I've been taking blood pressure medication since I was, I don't know, my my mid twenties. But when you say that, I understand the gravity of that because even in the moment, I, I looked over to Dominique and I said, I'm not gonna make it. When, when the anesthesiologist is trying to you know, pump medication into the IV to get my blood pressure to lower down at that moment, I just looked at it and said, I'm not going to make it because I felt my body almost shut down. So when you're saying that, it's so true that those statistics are high, especially for Black women, because the disparities that are happening in the medical community. And I was just talking to one of my girlfriends about pain, you know, our pain as a black woman, sometimes they take pain 
as no, you know, you, you, you're, you're saying your pain is a 10, it's really a five, you know, they, because there's studies that have been done um, where they were given anesthesiology or any kind of treatment for pain because they thought that our, you know, at that time, our skin was thick so it could handle pain. So it's a lot of information centered around that. But I understand that when I was high risk, that I needed the right provider. I needed the right provider to manage my health and to advocate for myself because I was an older woman, black woman with high blood pressure already having a baby. <laughs> so you know, when we can advocate for ourselves, and I think that's the important message that I want to um, leave here, Absolutely. is we need to speak up. And if you're not being heard, to get a second and a third opinion. Because like Leslie says, sometimes they think it's just in our head. Yep. So, you know, that that right there the, with the, the whole, um, you know, the maternal, um, with the health conditions is, is such... I mean, it was, it's a personal for me, but I know of many other women who have experienced um, those types of things as well. And when you think about that, you might say to yourself, well, is it the health um, factors of a woman's body going into a pregnancy that and being pregnant and having a child is one of the most stressful things on every organ of your body? Oh, yeah. Every organ of your body. So if every you're not 100 percent healthy going into that and, you know, most some people just didn't even know they were pregnant all of a sudden they're pregnant and they have their, but what if they're just not really healthy enough yeah. to have a child that could be part of it. But then the other part is it's a very physical thing and it just is a lot on the body and on the heart, on oh, the yeah. heart, obviously you experience that. So if we take it, if we fast forward all our ages, menopause increases the risk of cardiovascular disease in women, which we know because of estrogen once that estrogen comes down, and that was our cardio protector, ladies, but then there are other factors too. So if you're in perimenopause, which could take forever, my yoga teacher just went through this whole thing about that. Um, a lot of people don't have a conversation about estrogen in our bodies as women and what happens to us on a soft tissue basis, like so many women that are in the maybe 40s, 50s, or mid 50s, going to 60s, that are in perimenopause, that some people don't even know A, what that is, or B, that it's a thing, or C, that there are like five or 10 symptoms that determine that, yes, you are in perimenopause, besides a blood test or a saliva test to know what your, your estrogen, progesterone, estradiol, and all your hormones are. But you really need to realize that when those estrogen levels go down, and yes, you do have to like kind of burn them out, which is why I think you have, you know, hot flashes. Um, and I love to use essential oils. And I, I tell people, just put peppermint around your ankle bone and that cools down your ovaries and all your female organs before you go to bed. And it just cools you down and it, and it works and it's natural. It's not a drug, just peppermint oil. But um, what happens is when you have that estrogen move away from all of your joints, your ligaments and tendons and muscles, it affects your joints. It affects your neck. It affects your lower back. You, you all of a sudden might be stiff. You never used to be that. And guess what? No one talks about this. But it's ding, ding, ding. It's okay, estrogen. wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> it's estrogen. I'm just saying, I am in full menopause. And like Leslie, she said, what? Peppermint oil, all right? Yep. I have no idea. I've been suffering, y'all, in silence. I just I just be pouring out on a regular basis. Oh, no. I, I have not taken any medication because I'm like, I'm already on high blood pressure medication. So you just saying this right now is probably going to be a game changer for so many women. Absolutely. <laughs> me. Absolutely. <laughs> and my yoga teacher, Jesse from Shift Yoga in Laurel, Fulton area. She just sent us a letter about this whole year she had because of it. And now she's she trained herself and she understood for a whole year she didn't know what it was. And her gynae didn't tell her what it was either. But 
you know what? It it was it's perimenopause, P perimenopause. And a lot of women are going through it, and no one's talking about it. No one's having conversations about it. So yes, but everybody goes through it and it's okay. We should almost have circles of perimenopausal women to support. Just what, <laughs> I'm postmenopausal. I'm good. I'm done with right. that. But I would love to help people because there is the other side of it. You can get through it. You will get through it. Yeah. But it does suck. It It's hard. Yeah. So, you know, you just sharing about the joints. You know, I yep. just recently found out about that from someone else when I yep. was talking to them about it. But I didn't realize that I had the stiffness and I'm stretching and stretching and stretching and stretching. And I'm like, it's just a tightness thing. But then it's like, yep. so it is also affecting the heart. And Absolutely. I didn't realize that. Absolutely. Like, that's news to me. Yep. Because the heart's a muscle, right? And it has to stay hydrated. So here's the deal too, is if you are dehydrated as a massage therapist, I tell everybody you have to drink half your body weight in ounces. Okay, Rochelle? Yeah. Some people say, oh, Linda, yeah, I drank and I'm fine. Or some people <laughs> say, yeah, Linda, I drank because they knew I was coming in for massage. I'm like, oh, wow. That's yeah, nice. that's that pre, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so then I say, well, be sure you drink lots of water after the massage, because what I do is I'm moving your toxins through your body, your kidneys and liver are yeah. having to process it. But if you're not drinking enough water, you could almost have flu type symptoms because, you know, you're you're having a lot of toxins coming through your body. So that's an important component. But, you know, your say your IT band on the side here from your hip down to your knee, IT band or your lower back, or even like uh, your Achilles tendon, all those tendinous, really tight areas, those tendons really need, need water. So if you're a dehydrated kind of person that always have tight tendons and things like that, you drink water. If you have migraines a lot, drink water and it could be, oh my gosh, life-changing. Just yeah. drinking water. Yeah. Half your body, body weight and ounces. Yep. Yeah. I have yep. started drinking more water here recently. Now I like, you know, drinking all that water, but I do drink plenty of water, but I realize that there's a lot of things that I need to change for myself. Like even down to what I'm eating, because it's different the way that it's processing my body as I am almost 52 years old. And so, you know, no one really shares that information either. They're just like, mm -hmm. well, keep your body weight down, you know? And it's like, no, well, what exactly should I be eating? And what kind of activity should I be doing um, to help me? Because I definitely do not want to have a heart attack. I don't want to have a stroke. I don't want to have these things that are going to be debilitating to me. So, you know, having these open conversations about, you know, pre-menopause, perimenopause, full menopause, you know, post-menopause is so important because these are unique things that happen to us as women. Exactly. You know, so, and we're trying again to, to take care of ourselves. Exactly. So here's a, a few things it's easy to remember um, that we could eat for our hearts and they're all red. So it's mm. easy, right? So I love beets. You either like them or you hate them, but beets is one. Tomatoes, watermelon, chili, cumin, radishes, um, anything red, even like blueberries are great. So blueberries and strawberries are great because they're rich in flavonoids. And the word is, the official word is anthocyanins, which are um, certain flavonoids that help decrease blood pressure, but also help make your uh, vessels more elastic, make your veins and arteries more elastic. So eating organic blueberries, organic strawberries, if you have to do um, organic frozen, um, there's um, a great company. Um, I think it's Hy Hyman's, uh, something like that. You get them at Costco, uh, frozen blueberries. They're organic, but organic is better because there's a lot of chemicals and things. Yeah. That's, I mean, again, I didn't, I didn't know. So, and I know a lot of our women, in fact, we have women on LinkedIn and I'm going to, you know, switch over here for a second because there are some comments that are coming in here. And of course, um, you know, the, the internet stream yard is not allowing us to be great right now. Um, so I can't see all their comments, but I do have a comment here. That, um, Ileana, she's listening in on, on LinkedIn and she says, 
peppermint I'm ordering right now. Okay, so she's <laughs> she's already um, taking your advice on that because, you know, again, these are things that we should be talking more about, you know, and so I'm glad that you're here to, to keep on sharing because we, 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 we do have lots more to talk about um, as we're, we're moving through this. So what else would you um, recommend for us at this point in our lives? And we're talking about women that are between 45 and 65. Well, sleep is so important. I know oh, we talk oh. for five hours on sleep, girl. Yeah. And I wasn't a good sleeper myself. You know, with four teenagers, I wouldn't sleep until they all got back into the house once they got driving and all. And that kind of kind of settled in here. But um, I'm doing better with sleep. But they're saying that people that um, here's a statistic that about night owls, um, night owls and, and people that have sleep apnea have increased blood pressure blood glucose, and weight issues with insomnia. That's from heart.org. So if you are a night owl, um, there's, a, there's a circadian rhythm Chinese clock um, that each hour of the morning, from midnight, one, two, three in the morning, each um, hour, a particular organ gets to be regenerated and healing because at night is when we heal. Yeah. Should you choose to stay up really late, um, you're cutting in on that organ of healing. And so my my acupuncturist who's trained in Chinese medicine and, and five elements of China, of medicine in an acupuncture world, she says it's important to be in REM sleep by midnight. So my my ritual is get, I get in bed at eight or nine, but I get in bed probably between nine and 10 and lights out by 1030. That's my yeah. magic time. Yeah, that's me. 1030. And then then I'll be asleep by 11. And then, and I have, I sleep with, I promised my cardiologist, I'd get a, a watch, a, you know, smart watch. So I have mm -hmm. it on at night and um, I see how many hours I really sleep. Yeah. But here's the deal about sleep, ladies. We have to sleep more and longer and you have to have really good tools. So someday I could teach a whole class on sleep and I use essential oils. I use young living essential oils you really have to be sure you're using good quality oils, not from Amazon or Walmart and <laughs> stuff like that. Please don't do that. But um, what I've recently used, and one of my clients, and I, I spray magnesium on the bottom of my feet. I use cedarwood oil to help me sleep. But one thing that's really great is tart cherry juice. You get it from Trader Joe's or wherever you buy stuff. Tart cherry juice. You get it from any regular food store. Now it's not cheap. It's because it's organic and it's tart cherry juice. But if you look on the back of it, pomegranate juice has high calcium. You want to take calcium before you go to bed to help you sleep, right? Drink milk and all that. I'm not a big milk drinker. I don't drink milk. Yeah, me neither. But I, I like calcium and I don't do yogurt either, but I do like calcium. And yes, anybody could take a pill. But I'd rather have that. Um, so I put a little about probably an inch or two of the, of tart cherry juice, you know, about an hour before I want to go to bed, a little bit of water, and then I drink it. And I, I'm telling you, it really makes a difference because of the calcium. Mm. And it's red and it's good for your heart. Cherries are good for your heart too. So it's kind of like a double Benny right there. The so other every thing, night that's what you do? That's what I do every night now, yeah. Yeah, because of the calcium. Wow. So uh, I want you to stand in the in the fruit juice section that doesn't have sugar in it, but I mean like organic, pure fruit juice, and 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 look at all the fruits calciums, in the yeah, back. and with with no sugar added because I I don't like I don't do sugar, and I want it to be tart. That's why it's called tart cherry juice <laughs> because wow. it is tart, and and I don't mind that if it's going to help me sleep. So you just chug yeah. it down, chug it down. Well, okay. And then he said magnesium. Yes. Yeah, so um, there's spray magnesium from Moms, my organic market. They have a spray magnesium. So you put that on the bottom of your feet because that's the uh, largest pores in your body. You could also spray it on your calves if your calves, you know, have involuntary muscle spasm in the middle of the night or something, or your shoulders hurt and it could sting a little bit, but you could spray it on your traps if they're tight or any muscle that's tight, magnesium. But really even better than that, that's easy every night, is to take a hot Epsom salt bath. I'm really big on hot Epsom salt bath. So you take a two cups of Epsom salts, turn on your bath hot, as hot as you could stand it, and you throw the Epsom salts in it. 
and 20 minutes and 20 minutes only because that will allow the magnesium to get into your body and your skin's your largest organ. So everywhere in your body will get magnesium, even better than spraying your feet. You do that like at nine o'clock at night, 10 o'clock, get in bed by 10.30. It is, it is like a Valium magnesium because your whole body's getting it. it and it's better than a glass of wine, magnesium <laughs> bath. Because your whole body's getting it and you feel you go to get up out of the bath and you don't take, have to take a shower. Just dry yourself off and go to bed and you'll feel, oh, my gosh, I feel so relaxed. And that's what magnesium does. Oh. Is it, it relaxes you. That's the whole point. It relaxes you. Yeah. Like I, my whole life has just changed. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, just, I had no idea about any of these things. I oh, just been, yeah. I just been moving like like an old lady in here trying to figure out what it is that I'm trying to get through this stage of my life and like having these, you know, uh, different tools that we can use so that way, you know, we, we can have a, I wouldn't say a better experience, but at least we have some things that are going to be helpful um, when we're not feeling like we're just, you know, falling apart. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a dicey air time of our lives here, and um, I'm late. I'm late to see somebody talking about the physical, and mental upkeep of our businesses, our bodies. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And it's but it's key to have a, some a, a base, you know, like just to have a base of knowing what I need to do. So that's why I wrote my book. So in my book is about all these sleep tips or all these resources in my book for $20 on Amazon. I mean, you can't beat $20. And when you have a birthday or a mother's day or something that you want to give to a woman in your life that you love, I always tell women, buy them my book. Not so yeah. I can become a millionaire. I am not a millionaire. And that's not why I wrote the book. I wrote the book to save women's lives to yeah. empower them, to educate them, and to allow them to realize it doesn't have to be that difficult. But we as a body of women, collectively, we need to help each other. Yeah. We need to support each other. Right, Rochelle? Yeah, we need I to agree. I agree. You know, I had an event um, the other evening and, you know, one of the women shared with us that she just found out she has fibroids and she's been in so much pain for so many years and she was just sharing like this experience. And then, you know, come to find out I have many women in my life who have had fibroids, you know, and everybody's keeping these things to themselves because right. they are embarrassed or, right. you know, they don't want anybody to know their, their health. And, you know, you may think, oh, I'm sharing my health and they think that I'm going to die tomorrow or something, you know, sig you know, significant to that. But in reality is we're teaching one another. Like here are some things that you can use as you go through it. Like my mom never went through menopause. She she's never yeah. she never went through the stage. I am in full blown and I'm the only <laughs> woman in my family, like in, you know, with my sisters and all that is going through this. So I'm like, I don't mm -hmm. even know what's happening to me. You know, and it's and it, your hair, it changes yeah. the way that yeah. your your hair yeah. is growing and it, and, and muscle mass, you know, it yep. decreases, your muscle loss yep. is decreasing. And so, you know, all these things, knowing this, I'm like, I got to do things differently. So this is right on time for me. Now, I don't know about all the other women that are yeah. here, but this is right on time for me. I'm sure it is. So we've got um, K. Ron who just came on here. Good evening, my queen. And Glenroy is, is here every night, um, or excuse me, every Sunday so him being late here and he is a supporter of us. And so he is here all the time. And I love that because um, he gives his perspective on, you know, what we're talking to. And so tonight, y'all, we have been really talking about health and we've been talking about heart health because this is, you know, National Heart, you know, month, if you will. And Linda um, has been sharing a lot of different tips of, and advice and some statistics so that way we're not going out here and thinking, hey, something's happening to our body and we're not paying attention and we're not getting the help that we need. And so we just spent, you know, about an hour here just talking through um, those things. So what more 
do we need to um, cover down on, Linda? So um, I, I made it concise for women, and I, I called it nine pillars of heart disease prevention because a pillar is what holds you up and gives you the strength. Pillars when buildings are built, you know, that are that the building stands atop. And so these are, I'll go through kind of real quick. Um, and these are nine pillars that are also in the book. And I, I teach this in a, um, in a PowerPoint to companies, groups of women, and I take a longer time going through it. But number one is to know your numbers. And so obviously your cholesterol, LDL, and, and, and all that, triglyceride levels, blood pressure, blood sugar, but also your C-reactive protein. So this is an important component that when you go for your physical, you want your doctor to be sure that they ask for the CRP because that's an inflammatory marker. And you want it to be HS, high sensitivity CRP test. And so this is comes out of your blood and it's just a, just a test. But it lets you know what your inflammatory marker is, just like I just spoke about inflammation and how cortisol and high stress creates increased inflammation. So it all plays out when we go to get our blood work done. Then the doctors tell us truly like, so this is how you're doing. But here's the deal about the cholesterol thing is that stress can also raise your cholesterol. But um, the founder of um, American Institute of Stress, Dr. Paul Roche, wrote a whole book about how stress, not cholesterol, plays into cardiovascular disease. Stress. Mm -hmm. And people are dying of stress in, in regard to having heart attacks at younger ages now. So stress does kill. It's true. Stress kills. So really pay attention to your numbers and know what they are. High sensitivity CRP marker. So assess stress. It's so important. The emotional weight in your heart of, say, a really negative or heavy, hard relationship, grief, unforgiveness, all of this weighs heavy on your heart. Okay. And your heart, according to heartmath.org, a great nonprofit, your heart communicates with your brain more than your brain communicates with your heart. So that's why I teach people to come more into your heart, to pay attention to your heart, to do breath work into your heart, to do breathing. Go to heartmath.org. You'll learn quick coherence breathing. It's two, three minute quick breathing. We could do that later if you want. Yeah. Um, very simple breath work to bring you back into your heart. Okay. Movement is medicine. We need to move. You need to exercise. If um, lack of exercise doubles your chance of dying from heart disease. So that's pretty powerful, right? Just uh, not exercising doubles it. So obviously stop smoking. It's the number one preventable risk factor. And then eat and drink heart healthy. We mentioned some of the red fruits and veggies. We could eat tomatoes, beets, cumin, radishes, um, also those blueberries and raspberries and strawberries. Um, and some of these are soft. These are soft uh, lifestyle changes. And this one is to slow down, which is why my book is called The Pause to Slow Down. Yeah, show them. Yes. It's The Pause. And I was thinking about, Rochelle, I forgot to tell you this, but I would love to give away one of my books. I have a whole stack of them over here. To the person that's the furthest away from where Rochelle is right now, the furthest away, I don't care where you are in the world, <laughs> we're going to send you a book and I will I will do a signed copy. Is that okay, Rochelle? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so I thought that would be, be fun. Chomp it at the bit. They're yeah. going to be like, I'm the farthest. That would be fun. You know? that would be fun. Okay. okay, before you move to the next pillar, um, there is a couple of things here. Sure. All right. So Leslie is asking Is the CRP test a test? that they give in our annual, or is this something to ask for? It should be in your annual physical. But when you say, when your doctor says, okay, I want you to go to lab core and get your, um, I think it's called CPB or the whole panel, it's the whole panel, uh, fasting, glucose and all that. Um, you wanna ask him or her, did you put in for CRP, C-reactive protein? But you want want it to be the it's a little H and a little S and a big C, a big R and a big P. And it's high sensitivity CRP. So they've gotten better over the years, Leslie. They've gotten much better. So now it's called an HS CRP, 
So you don't know until you do this research, because I certainly did not know. Yeah, that is so good to hear. And like, yeah. I'm writing a whole bunch of stuff down. I know everybody else is too. They're eating it up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Chevy is like, great information. It's inspiring her to get back to talking about holistic nutrition mm -hmm. for better health in her business. Mm -hmm. um, and so she she does health and wellness too. Mm -hmm. um, so you're doing a lot of a lot of these things that you're speaking to as people are very passionate about it. We just mm -hmm. need to step into it and Correct. just to do it. Um, and right. then of course, Glenn always says she's in Vegas and <laughs> let's just say she's well, in Florida. So we'll have to figure out. Yeah, Rochelle figures that out. Yeah, I'll figure that out. <laughs> Not me. Out. Yeah. Not okay. Me. So keep going with the pillars. Okay. So, so slow down. So slow down. Yeah. especially, um, like I never did this. I'm from New York. I'm pretty high energy and yeah. I go, go, go. Me I'm kind of like Rochelle. Yeah. Uh, I am an energizer bunny and I don't take naps. Never did. Never will. I have to be half dead to lay on a couch. Well, when I had COVID last year, a couple of years ago, I was down for one day. And one day only. I watched mm -hmm. tennis on TV and then I got up and I went outside and did weeding. Yeah, I I, I don't lay around much. <laughs> yeah. but, I don't think any of us do, but, no, but but I learned that I have to slow down. Yes. I do. Yeah. I do. So it's important to nourish quiet time with prayer, meditation, mindfulness, um, yoga. I love yin yoga. Come in for a relaxing massage, reduce your cortisol. By getting a massage, it also lowers your blood pressure. Um, also, chiropractic, acupuncture, all of these, many of them are covered by, by you know, insurance. Um, and they all help the parasympathetic nervous system to come back on board, right? That's our goal is to be in the parasympathetic nervous system because we all can be in the sympathetic nervous system easily, easily. But we have to shift down, regulate us, and we have to regulate our nervous system. It's not self-care. I like to call it self-regulation because it's about you being the CEO of you, Rochelle, me being the CEO of, CEO of me. Mm -hmm. And I have to learn how to down regulate and regulate my nervous system. Okay. Yeah. So um, number seven is gather with girlfriends. Here's the deal. Yes. That is your insurance. That is your assurance for life and to not have heart attacks, ladies. Here's the deal. Here's the stats. Friendship helps ward off loneliness. A 29% 20, increased risk of heart attacks if you're lonely and a 32% risk of a stroke if you are lonely. And that's from the Heart Journal. Friendship promotes immunity by lessening stress. And friendship encourages healthy behaviors by increasing oxytocin and decreasing cortisol. So the oxytocin is the opposite, the happy hormone that we get when we're breastfeeding, we hold a baby, mm -hmm. you're bonding with women. When a whole group of women get together, all of our oxytocins are raised because we're all happy and we're around each other and the oxytocin is raised, right? Yeah. So we have to have oxytocin raising moments which you can have doing things in your own little life, but you also have to have moments to lessen that cortisol. It's so important, ladies. I can't stress that enough. And laughter, of course, is the best medicine. We know that, right, Rochelle? Yes, yes we, <laughs> we know that. Yes. Okay. So before the show, Rochelle and I were talking about dental cleaning, and that's so important. It's in my book too. I talk about, I go to a holistic biological dentist, and I really, 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 can't speak highly enough about cleaning your mouth before you take any medications, before you take a sip of water, whatever. Like I clean my mouth from bacteria, all the muck from overnight. I clean it with thieves, with just cinnamon, clove, lemon, eucalyptus. And I rinse my mouth out and I spit it out. And then I take my thyroid med. And when I'm on a podcast like this, I tell people, this is what I do because I don't want to swallow my bacteria that's in my mouth. I want to kill it all the way down to the throat. Kill it. And so that's an important component because that same bacteria can create a chronic inflammation, chronic gum inflammation, which can play out into cardiovascular issues. 
play out. If if you find me on Instagram, pause to relax. <laughs> I talk about uh, your teeth. Just this last week, I talk about your teeth. And there's um, a Paracelsus clinic in Switzerland. That's all they do is they focus on your whole body holistically, but they start with your teeth because so many disease processes begin with the mouth. Begin. With I, the agree. Mouth. Okay. I agree. I agree. People, people don't think about it. They don't. And you could smell when someone has mm -hmm. like a gut issue or, you know, maybe um, like you said, inflammation mm -hmm. or something yep. that's going on in their body from their, yep. their breath, mm -hmm. you know? And so you, when you're speaking to it, okay. So share with us again about the cinnamon, the, the, the whatever that rinse that you were. Oh, uh, that's called thieves. So I use young living in my practice here. I've used young, young living essential oils for 17 years and, um, and they're a good quality oil. There are other companies out there. That's fine, but you have to do your own homework and be sure you know where you're getting your essential oils from. I know I've been to the farm at Young Living for years. I know where their oils are coming from. And I know they have farms and partner farms. So I feel confident using them on my family, my clients. And this is what I've used for years. Thieve. So if you're interested, you could reach out to me through my website, lindapancala.com. Or just don't find it. Please don't find it on Amazon or online. Because this is a company where you're not supposed to be able to find that. And I don't want anyone to doctor it up or dummy it down or water it down and resell it to you. So some of these products aren't meant to be found on Amazon, but if you find it, just let it go. You should find it from a person and you, you could get your own account too. So you have to be yeah. really savvy about buying things. Yeah. yeah. It's Especially true. something like this. Oh yeah. yeah. It's too well, um, important. I um, got schooled. Um, so the, the women that are here, um, there's a few of us that are part of Mosaic Nation. In fact, Leslie George is the, the founder and it's nothing but, you know, uh, women. And there's a couple of men in there, but mostly women who gather every morning at 745. And we talk through a lot of these different things. But one of the things that we were speaking to um, was the, the, the fact of, you know, um, how products are made and they share this app. And you can scan the product and it can, mm -hmm. you can list the ingredients out and they will give it a report on whether or not that product is good for you. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many cancer causing products. And yeah, and it's called Yucca. Yucca. Yeah, it's I have called, it on my phone. I have yeah. it on my phone. Yeah. That so I just great. downloaded that yesterday and I was like, scanning all kinds of stuff and i was like oh my gosh this is, says red <laughs> this is how i'm not supposed to be using this stuff and i've been using it for years so i guess yeah. Linroy knows about it too he says yeah. I, he loves it so <laughs> i went to my pantry and i looked at things and i was like oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> i know and one of the other girls was like i she just threw out a whole bunch of stuff because it just said you know, these products are not good. If we think they are good because they yeah. say on them that they are, but you're speaking to, you're like these oils, they may say that they're mm -hmm. good for you, mm -hmm. but you know, mm -hmm. you have to do your research, you know, you don't yeah. want to do anything harmful. And I use a, some Young Living Essential Oil um, skincare. And so that yeah. all came up fine and good in the Yucca app too. So it was good okay, to know good. that. Too. Yeah. Yeah. So that's important, but be sure you know where you're getting that from too. So the yeah. last one is um that we're just talking about is use nature to nurture, walk on the grass, barefoot. Yeah. Um, so that you get the healing electrons from the earth into your body to ground you. Um, and that's important. And uh aromatherapy is important too, especially if you have problems sleeping. But you could also get the book um uh earthing written by um, a cardiologist and it's all about how you could use earthing earthing sheets like I have earthing sheets on my bed so you plug it into the ground of your outlet right behind your bed and then it's plugged into the sheet and so we sleep on grounded sheets I, you know what we also talked about that um, yeah. and yeah I just never really thought too much into it, but you're yep. like the second person to say this. Uh, 
Yeah, I never even thought I have a weighted blanket, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> got anything? Yeah, um, Leslie, we just talked about this on Friday. Like, um, um, Leslie put yeah. that on there. Walking on the grass, you know, grounding yourself. Kron actually brought it up, and she's yep. here um, alive too. So, yeah, many of these things that you're speaking to, we hear these things, but we actually need to apply it somehow some way into our life um so, so one of my goals with my book is to have like circles of women that have read it yeah uh, be all over the country all over the world whatever but have circles of support that are having people um just help each other and support yeah. each other like my sister and i are let me show you two books my sister and i are reading this book right now together undo it by Dr. Dean Ornish, and it's all about lifestyle choices. You could reverse cardiovascular disease, reverse all kinds of diseases from all of his research and Medicare and Aetna in California. Certain insurance companies pay for it. You get this on Amazon. It, yes, it is two inches, but um, yeah, yeah, well, that's yeah I, read it, I read it every night. And um, it's an important component of realizing that you can make really good sound wise lifestyle choices. And yes, he's very plant based focused. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, like I do eat meat. I like meat, but the, you know, the other day I went two days in a row, not eating meat. I was going to go for three having shrimp and whatever. Um, but I made it two. but I tried at least to be veggie two or three days a week now. And yeah. so I want, I want my blood work to change next month when I go get it. And I want it to have changed because of these ch choices I have made. And so here's another book that um, Dr. Nav Navaz Habib, he um, wrote a more current book. I just ordered it. It's it's called Upgrade Your Vagus Nerve. And this is the vagus nerve I mentioned, I talked about. You could start with this book. It's on Amazon, Activate Your Vagus Nerve. Um, his current book is, is Upgrade It. Um, and he is all about the vagus nerve. And that's so important to be calm, to engage it, to realize. And if anybody has had cancer or has cancer now, I've trained with some women that know about the vagus nerve. And she said, it's so important to be in the parasympathetic nervous system as much as possible. Because if you're in the sympathetic nervous system and all that the cancer does stressing you out, or if you have chemo and all those choices you make, that can help the cancer grow. So mm -hmm. she, this is a three-time breast cancer survivor, this doctor, Dr. Desalnez is her name. I'll send Rochelle all of her information. Yeah. Um, she talks about the need, if you have had cancer or have cancer, to try as much as you can be in the parasympathetic nervous system. And, you know, people just don't think about that. And I believe in supporting an organization like Believe Big, who uses... Um, um, they use a certain um, plant f instead of chemotherapy for mm. injecting instead mm. of chemo. And yeah. uh, it's, it's a lot more natural. It's not myrtle. Gosh, it escapes my brain. But you could Google Believe Big. And um, it's an amazing uh, organization that began right here in Montgomery County in Maryland. And now she's global helping people fight cancer. Mistletoe. Wow. It's the mistletoe that you put over, you know, the mistletoe, but it's mistletoe from yeah. Germany. And, you know, in Germany, they don't use chemo and radiation. They just use things like mistletoe. So some uh, certain, yeah. certain countries don't use what we use. And so that's... Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, certain countries, yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't allow that, yeah. 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 Wow. I don't know about anyone else, but I feel like... <laughs> I just got schooled <laughs> on so many different levels and I'm big into health and wellness. Like I'm big into feeling good, looking good, be, you know, all the things and, and, and keeping a healthy mind and a healthy body. And these right here, I, I seriously, by you coming here on the show and providing us these tips and these, this type of information is, is so powerful. Because people are like, again, women, and I'll say women, um, we we just go about doing our business. We do what we do. And then we stop. We have to stop and take care of ourselves when things, 
you know, unfortunately happen. And there were certain things that we could be doing. So I absolutely appreciate your study, your research, your experience, your knowledge on what you've shared with us tonight, because I think for sure people are going to be like, I'm really going to take things a little bit more seriously. And just to be I, like the, like you said, the CEO of your body, like take control of your body and what it is, especially as we're getting into the more mature seasons of our life. Right. And the whole deal too, Rochelle, is um, there's no do-overs. No. This is it. What we have is it. At church today in London season and all, you know, we're all going to die, but you don't want to die any earlier than you have to. But, you know, the you know, there are no do-overs. So let's get it right the first time, right? And there's only one time you'll go through perimenopause. There's only one time I went through it, but I made it through the other side. Yeah. And I, I made it. Okay. And you will make it too, but yeah. you're going to learn all these life lessons. And yes, it's hard. And it's just waking up in a puddle of sweat. Who wants to do that? Who can understand that? Right? Yeah. Every night. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I just tell Dominic, don't touch me. <laughs> Leave the fan on. Yeah, I just, I can't. Like, it's just too much in here. Just stop it. Because <laughs> you just feel like I'm in a big old flame, you know, and it's all like, it just takes over. But, you know, just a little bit of things that can be helpful. Oh, sure. It's just yeah. a small little shift. You know, yeah. you don't have to make a bit, and you don't have to necessarily go anywhere. You don't have to go to a health club and you don't have to buy tons of things. You just have to be mindful about saying, okay, so even if you get my book and you say, oh, nine pillars, I'm going to just, just focus on one pillar. Yeah. One pillar. And that, and that's all just one. If it's smoking, if you smoke, that would be a good first one. If you don't exercise, that's a good one too. Yeah. But if we can do like one or two breathing exercises, but yes. I want to, I want to, I want to read you a quote from um, the back of my book. I'm all about great quotes. I don't know if you like great quotes too. Yeah, Michelle, yeah, but yeah, I do. Quote. I'm a quote freak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I could read, I could say most of it um, by heart because I love it so much. So this is from Ferdinand Porsche, who was, um, you know, the Austrian uh, automaker. And so he goes like this. As a former jockey, it, this is right up my alley. Life is a race marked by a start and a finish. And it's what we learned during the race how we apply it that determines whether our participation has had particular value. If we learn from each success and each failure and improve ourselves through this process, then at the end, we will have performed well and reached our potential. Mm -hmm. So I think it doesn't get any better than that because there's a start and a finish yeah. And we're in the meat of our life. And, and I want to offer each of us hope. There's a lot of heavy statistics I shared, but there's so much hope in gathering us together as strong women that we are and men. I know there's men here too, yeah. but to come together to help each of us be able to thrive, not survive. Our goal is not to survive. Anybody could survive. We want to thrive just like Rochelle teaches us. Yeah. That's so beautiful. And it's so true. It's, it, you know, and it's always interesting how we look at life, but we are now in the thick of it, right? And we're yep. in the middle of the race. So what yep. are we doing about it? And I, we do have one question. That oh, sure. Up. Um, so Glenn Rory asks, what are some tips you can offer men that have wives that may be facing perimenopause within the next few years? What can we do or not do? <laughs> to support our wives while she is going through these changes. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's really good. Yeah. Um, I'm a really big book reader and I really like to educate myself. So I will ask my yoga teacher who is now beginning to teach women about this phase of life. She, I'm sure has found a book or two that she says, this is the best. I will ask her tomorrow by email or I'll call her. And she will tell me and I'll tell Rochelle yep. um, what I would do compassionately as someone who really cares about her. Um, just give her space because this is an alien invasion into our bodies. You need to understand that as a man. And, you know, you guys never had a baby. You guys never went through a hot flash. You've never had a period. 
And so you've never really understood what it's like to be a woman. You just might see her, but to really experience that. So I would say to be as compassionate as you can, because mentally she might be riding the roller coaster or crazy too. It's all part of it, right? <laughs> just, just, just get on the ride. <laughs> Jump on the ride. <laughs> but she's still on it and you're just watching it and you're like, wow. So you could say something simple like, Hey babe, what, what can I do to help you? I mean, you don't, you don't have to say, Oh, you're sitting in a puddle of sweat and you want me to get you, you know, dry clothes. No, but how, how can I help you? As few words as possible. How can I be of help? Period. Just without few words, without a whole lot of drama, there's we're, we already have gone through the drama. We bring children into the world. We raise our families. We work. We, and we're dying earlier. So men, take heed. Love up on your woman and just be kind to her because it's as foreign to her as it is to you. You're both in it. You're in perimenopause too, I hate to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Just hold hands. Oh, Lord. Just hold we'll hands. Get to this together. <laughs> Go for a cold walk and then, then do an angel in the snow. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, he says he's trying to educate himself before the alien invasion <laughs> occurs. You're a good man, Glenn Roy. I, look, I just know that it's just, your wife is just always like so thankful and grateful that she has you as her husband because not a lot of men are asking what do they what can yeah. they do for their wife that's right? a special man special yeah. man there exactly all right so any last you know parting thoughts or you know information or anything you have for our audience i think we covered down a lot of information we i think did. That we, there was a lot to be thinking about. There was a lot of resources. Again, your book is called, and I don't want to mess up the title because I have it written up here, but the pause to relax ladies mm -hmm. for robust heart health. Yep. It's blue with a palm tree. So you can always remember that. And you can find that on Amazon, on Amazon. and KDP, KDP and um, KDP. Yep. All right. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you, um, Take a look at that. And like you said, purchase that for your girlfriend or for your um, your mom or, you know, someone that you actually love who would appreciate the information um, that is inside the book. And so Tiffany says she added it to her cart on Amazon already. Oh, thank you. That's you great. Know. I just want to remind you guys, too, that um, I'll be teaching Tuesday night about um, heart health. I'll be going through this whole thing in a PowerPoint. I'll send it to Rochelle. And Rochelle, you could send it out to your tribe. Okay. Um, Tuesday night, I'm teaching with Abby Dixon, and she's talking about heart rate. And it's 7 o'clock East Coast Standard Time um, this Tuesday. And it's called Heart Sense. And then the following Monday, if you're local, I'll be at uh, Salt on Main. It's a salt room. And we're going to have heart sounds. I'm going to be teaching breathing. And she's going to be doing, Karen, the owner, is going to be doing sound bowls. And you're going to be sitting in a salt room, smelling salt, sitting <laughs> on a comfy chair. Yeah. And uh, it's $60. And there's okay. a link for that, too. I'll send it to well, Rochelle. already had yeah. it. I'll send it to you. Yep. She can send it out. And if you care to join us, that would be awesome. At least if you're local, you know, you could join us. That would be great. But why don't we end with just two breathing techniques? And yes. one, the last one will really help people sleep. So if we have some insomniacs here, um, hopefully my prayer is that you can use these tools to help you sleep. Okay. All right. So the first one is the Navy SEALs box breathing. Since, you know, a lot of people here are military, um, why don't we just do box breathing? And I'll do the counting. We'll only do two exchanges. And then we'll go into vagus nerve stim vin breathing. So get comfy, relax, sit back. And all we're going to do is inhale to the nose, into the nose and exhale through the mouth. We're going to inhale to the count of four. Inhale, two, three, four, pause, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, pause, two, three, four. So you go ahead and do it yourself. I'll do it too. Inhale.
One more. Okay, now I want everyone to put their right hand on their heart and the left hand on top of your heart. For women, our heart is more central in between the girls. A man's heart's more to the left, so our heart's central. And I really want you to close your eyes, and I want you to think of a really kind, loving, compassionate scene in your life, whether it's holding a baby or sitting with your kitty or sitting on a mountaintop or your feet in the water and a beach. But I really want you to feel gratitude and compassion. I want you to feel that by breathing into your heart and really sink into this emotion. What this scene helps you do is just be more relaxed and peaceful. Okay, beautiful. So now I want you to take your right hand, put it down on your belly. Take your left hand, put it on your chest above your heart. We're going to access your lungs. And this is called my stim vin breathing. Stim is stimulate, vn is vagus nerve. Stim vin breathing. What we're going to do, just listen first, is breathe into your right hand, which is into your belly. So you're going to inhale into your belly then lifting up your lungs. And you're going to exhale through your mouth and say, ah. ah. Do that a few more times. Inhale into your belly first. Then the lungs. And exhale. Ah. The next time you exhale, I want you to keep your lips together and exhale. Mm. So you're going to exhale, humming it out. Okay. Okay. So inhale into your belly, through your nose, then your chest. Exhale and hum it out. Do that a few more times. The last time we're going to breathe is going to be to help you sleep tonight. When you go to your pillow, I want you to do that breathing technique we just did. You don't need to put your hands on your belly. That was just to learn it. You know how to breathe into the belly, then the lungs now. What yeah. you're going to do is take your finger, put it in your ears. You're going to hum it out. So you're going to breathe into the belly, then the lungs. Hum it out with your fingers, both in your ears. We're going to access the vagus nerve now. Okay, go ahead and do it. Inhale into the belly. And hum it out. One more.
Okay, beautiful. You put your hands down. Now I want to notice how we feel. So take a moment to just notice how you feel. You could say something about it or just make a note of it right now. Why we did that is because the vagus nerve that starts down in the belly all the way up into the brain goes through every organ of your body. Like I said, it is not online when we're under stress. What we just did was we brought it back online by vibrating our vocal cords because it runs through the vocal cords before it goes either side of the carotid artery into the brain. The closest place we could access the vagus nerve and touch it is in the ear. So giving yourself a ear massage every night, pulling your earlobes down, and then doing that breathing technique laying down in your bed, finger in your ear. If you did that five to 10 times every night, I guarantee you, you will feel like you went from the 15th floor to the basement in less than three or four minutes, just by doing that breathing technique. It's just so visceral and so powerful, better than a Valium. It's better than a Valium. And it'll take you down, down, down. And it'll help you sleep. And that's what I do too, besides magnesium and the bath. So yeah, hopefully that. Do you feel the difference, Rochelle? I do. I feel so relaxed. I feel mm -hmm. like I'm about to go to bed right now, y'all. Right. So. Well, I, <laughs> but I, I feel like these are techniques that, yeah. you know, that you could just do starting tonight. It's just starting right. tonight. We all have Epsom salt from probably years ago Costco. a bag or a bottle somewhere sitting up there yeah. and then of course i'll be out looking at the magnesium spray so uh, that'll be my and the peppermint oil those are the two things that i'm going to right invest in because i feel like those are things that can be helpful for me right now but i am so so thankful that you were here for with us tonight and we got so much from it um and Glenroy has the last question and he wanted to know the title of your book so he can order that for his wife. And I'm going to see if it'll come up on the comments here because sometimes, you know, from the technology that we have here, um, it doesn't show up. So Glenroy, just let me know if you see this because sometimes, um, oh, there it comes up. Yep, okay. There we go. So the pause to relax ladies for robust heart health. Um, and again, it's on Amazon. Um, so just put it in the cart and when it's, when you're ready to purchase, purchase it. And she will be like, I love you even more, Glenroy. <laughs> All right, so if we don't have anything else to talk through, thank you so much for everyone who is live with us tonight. Thank you for your attention and for your comments, all this valuable information that y'all have shared in here. And then next week we will be back here, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we will have our next guest talking about human design. All right, so we will be talking through how we all think, but based on, you know, so, sort of kind of what we spoke to Linda about some of the things um, for our mind, our body and our soul and how we portray ourselves here in the world. So please join us back here next Sunday for that episode. So thank you so much, Linda, for being thank here you. tonight. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you. And we sure. will see you all later. Love y'all. Bye. Take care. Thank you.